Hey guys, a the new expansion United in Stormwind has just been announced. Uh, they had a demonstration of the new some of the new cards and some of the new mechanics. I'm already loving them. They're just really interesting things. They're some really cool new keywords that actually seem useful. Uh, I know sometimes some things like Frenzy don't seem really that useful except for a few cards, but uh, the, some of the stuff actually just looks really cool and really fun and lots of deck building potential. Um, I'm really enjoying it. So first, um, but yeah, the, the I'm going to talk, we're going to go over the cards and I'll give a uh, pretty decent broken or garbage rating. Uh, that's kind of the simpler this as as to keep it simple uh, though at the end I usually will do a when the, all the cards are re revealed I will do a live stream uh, a live stream card reveal where I go over with all the different cards and so hopefully we'll see that but right now I'm just going over some of the of these ones so first we got this this Sorcerer's Gambit. And this kind of works differently than different quests because it's it's called a quest line card. It's not quite the same as a quest. So when you complete this quest, you get this stall for time quest, which automatically gets in. So then you do it again. So your first reward, you get draw a spell. Then you get discover one. And then once you do the last one, which is everyone is the same, cast fire, frosted arcane spell, you get this Arcanist Dawn Grasp. And for the rest of your game, you have plus three spell damage. So the biggest weakness of this is it's very slow, but if you can have a deck that naturally draws this, so maybe you're just playing no minion mage, you use this as a turn one play, and uh, you draw through your deck, then all of a sudden at some point you play this, this card will, will basically give you inevitability. Your cards will be so incredibly efficient with the spell damage uh, that you'll just absolutely wreck uh, in the late game. So And the, you can just put cards that are already... Things like, you know, Devolving Missiles, I believe, is Arcane, stuff like that. You can uh, put these cards in, and you don't really have to necessarily do a big build around. So this might be a card that, in a slower meta, that just absolutely wrecks. Uh, right now, everybody's trying to beat Priest, and I feel this card would absolutely crush Priest. And once you play your three cards, you end up drawing the spell. So if you're playing these cards anyways, you'll get the spell, and you'll kind of get to a spot where your card neutral. So in theory, this card's really good, but that being said, against a faster tempo deck, very, very, very slow and forces out using the one man on turn one to can't go font of power or something else. So um, I'm gonna go with uh, decent, but I don't think this is broken at all. And I, I could end up being bad. We'll see what the rest of the cards are, but I love the idea. Um, so I can't definitely can't give it uh, a garbage. It definitely has a lot of potential. Though I could definitely see it being a bust. So for some reason on the site, you have to click on them all individually. So the next is another mage spell called Fire Sale. On the surface, deal three damage to all minions, but it is tradable. What does that mean? And tradable cards apparently means you can use one mana and put it back in your deck and get a different card, which isn't considered drawing a card. So for draw card mechanics, so if you have like something like, oh, every time you draw a card, do X, that wouldn't work for this. But you can spend one mana. So it's it's a card that you can put in as a tech card, you know, to beat something. But if you have it and it's a matchup where it doesn't matter, you can just put it back in your deck. I love this mechanic. I love that you can put cards now that aren't really good enough because in certain decks, but you can put them back in so you don't have this dud of a draw. And you can just keep putting it back in your deck over and over again. So you never, you know, at the cost of one mana. So this is a thing for decks, you know, if it, it really could change the way Hearthstone is played because certain things might not be very good or that weren't very good because they were too niche. All of a sudden it can be really good because when you're playing, you know, uh, we're going to go over a card later, but when you're playing a deck that, you know, dealing three damage isn't good, you just put it back in your deck. But when it is good, not only you have it, but you can trade other cards to get that card faster. So I think this is a fantastic mechanic. And I think this card is absolutely really strong. Even just four mana deal, three dollar minions is good to begin with. But you add in the tradable element, this card is broken. This card is really, really good. 
Next, we got the Demon Seed, and it doesn't give the full quest line on here. Uh, I found it on Reddit, but it's quest line take six take six damage on your turns. Um, so you're dealing self damage, and uh, so as you get once you get to six, so you'll heal for three. So that will be kind of uh, while dealing damage to the enemy hero. So when you do that, you kind of net back the life. But and you're kind of warlock already wants to damage themselves anyways. And there's some really cool things. So the way I found out on Reddit, what I believe what happens. And let me is that when when you the stage one takes six, then it's stage two takes seven, same effect, reward life steal. But stage eight take eight damage return reward of Blightborn Taz Hamson, and it's a five five seven seven battle cry for the rest of your game damage you take on your turns deals your opponent instead so you could now self you can use the self damage if you're you equip jaraxxus and you hit somebody with a weapon let's say they have an 8-8 on board that's going to go to them this is absolutely insane and gives the warlock a very reasonable win condition which is huge and if you're already dealing damage to yourself anyways you're going to get lifesteal on the way because you know you're, you're dealing yourself damage anyways so this is a, a huge win condition and one of the really cool things that actually might make this broken is that we believe we believe it's going to work with fatigue because it's on your turn so warlock has the self milling properties but this always starts in your hand so you mill through your entire deck you get to fatigue and you have this quest and now your fatigue damage is hitting your opponent this could be insane. Now, it could be this, but Warlock, some of the fatigue cards are really strong because you mill through your deck so fast. But it normally was, well, then you just lost once you got the fatigue. I thought the five mana guy was that gave you all the three twos wasn't actually that good. Uh, I remember I had a rogue game where I randomly generated it against a priest with a Jandis, and I shadow stepped it, and I still lost. So, very badly, because they just kept removing my boards. But when you have this, now your fatigue damage is damaging your opponent. Self mill warlock might be broken. So this card's super cool. Uh, the the deck building potential is there. You know, it still might not be good because you might just get killed by a face hunter. But that being said, I love this idea. It allows you to self mill cast. I'm gonna go with broken. This card is crazy. I love this card. I'm hoping to play some warlock again. I just this card really excites me. Um, next we got this ruined mithril rod so this is a weapon for warlock but it's after you draw four cards reduce the cards of your cost in your hand but durability by one lose one durability so this is mana cheating this is warlock's new octopod so you know over time in a, in a slower matchup one this could be used for combos which warlock doesn't really have any but it can just be used for tempo you spend three mana on this uh and it might give you 16 mana effectively you know you discard warlock usually is a big hand you get two eight mana discounts. That can be a lot. Now, this card might be too slow. It might, you know, just, just War Warlock might not be able the luxury to play this three mana card, but I love this. And it also could get oozed. So there's a lot of weaknesses of this card, especially, so this might just be garbage, but I think I really, I want to see it work. So I'm going to be definitely trying out. So I'm going to go with pretty decent, um, but it could be a thing of it just doesn't really work. But I think the I like the idea and I like Warlock. I like when classes that aren't traditional weapon classes have non-traditional weapons. I think those are really cool. So I think this is a really cool card and I hope it's good. Next, we got Mailbox Dancer, Battle Cry. Add a coin to your hand. Death Rattle, give it to your one. Maybe if a deck wants... The coins really badly they might use it but other than that this is pretty bad i'm gonna go with garbage uh it's you know it's neutral effect because both you and your opponent get the coin and it's a horrible stat line three twos are very easy to kill next we got impatient shopper three three rush tradable <clears throat> this is an arena card uh, i just think while it does have the tradable mechanic it's cool just even the effect isn't that good. So it's a card that you wouldn't want to be using tradable anyways. So I'm going to go with this is just straight garbage. Um, next, we got Rustred Viper. Tradable, destroy your opponent's weapon. So it's an ooze, but with a solid stat line, and it's tradable. This card is nuts. 
everybody's gonna be running this card goodbye weapons but this card is crazy any weapons in the meta they're gonna get this like because now you can play it and when you have it if you're especially you can always trade it it's got a good stat line a lot of good things going for this card uh this card's broken it's one of the best uh tech ooze cards i've i've seen because it's uh when the opponent doesn't run a weapon it's not bad because you can just it just oh i lost one mana oh no oh no you know like oh i put a three mana three four oh no like very solid card overall so oh i forgot let's go this, this order on this is real weird on the website but we've got next we've got pandarian imposter battle cry discover a spell that didn't start in your deck this is really interesting because it's it's great for the mana two mana one three discover card fantastic but what's interesting about it is usually cards that don't start in your deck aren't the good ones so if you're running this in priest well you can't get apotheosis you can't get renew you can't get palmry you can't get soulmere you can't get condemn you can't get hysteria so it's really garbage in classes that have good spells so it's a really interesting card where what classes it will be good in and what classes it won't. So certain classes aren't going to run this because it's just going to be, they already have all the good spells in their deck. So that's what's interesting about it. It is actually not as good as a normal discover because so, but let's say you're playing maybe a high minion deck. This card might be really good. So it's a very interesting card. Um, and I'm curious to see, I definitely think some decks are going to run it. But because the the efficiency is fantastic, a two mana one three with discover a card, that that's very very good. But if you uh, if you all your spells in your deck that, that are useful are already in your deck, well then this is not going to be that good. So I think that's a really interesting card. I'm gonna go with pretty decent, um, very well designed card. Um, next, we got peasant at the start of your turn draw a card. Now, you know, drawing lots of cards is good, but at the start, even at the end of your turn, draw cards, things like the, the Mana Tide Totem for Shaman are just so hard to use. Now, you can play this on one, but just realistically, your opponent's going to kill it. Um, any tempo deck is going to kill it. So um, a 2-1 is very easy to kill, dies to Demon Hunter, dies to Rogue. So I think this card will never see play. Now, maybe somebody figures out there's a, there's some buff mechanics that are coming out. Maybe figure out a buff mechanic that makes this work. But in general, I think this card is garbage. So I'm going to go garbage. So Flight Master Dungeoneer. Now, this card's really interesting. So it's you get to choose what kind of flight you want. So you have three flights. One is Westfall, where you in, in one turn summon a random 2-2 adventurer. So that is just like I'm going to get a slightly better statted 3-drop. Uh, that's a little bit delayed, a little bit slow. Um, then you've got this Iron Forge in three turns, restore 10 health to your hero, and then Eastern Plagues in five turns, deal 12, so randomly split among with all enemies. And I love these kind of cards. I love dormant cards, but I, I just can't get on board with this card. I hope I'm wrong. But realistically, so do I know I'm going to want to three turns heal 10 health to my hero? You know, and if I'm, I'm playing against an aggressive deck like a Hunter, unless I have a clear for next turn, I would rather usually just clear the board. So, but if I'm healing 10 to my hero, uh, the chances are I need to be taking damage. In that case, I don't want to have a card that's delayed three turns. It's just so slow. Uh, the Eastern uh, Plague Lands is kind of interesting, but still incredibly slow. So some of these effects are just so slow. The Westfall isn't bad, um, but is it good enough to justify a dormant three drop? Probably not. So realistic. Well, I think this card is super cool, and I love the design of this card. Realistically, what deck is going to play this? When is it going to actually be useful? I'm going to go with garbage. Sad to say that because I love this card. I hope I'm wrong, but it just looks like a bad card. Realistically, uh, these effects are too slow for what what they want to do. Um, you know, maybe this Eastern Plague Lands, you get it somehow more in one of these with raised deads or something, and you can could do a lethal as a priest i don't know but generally i think this is real bad prismatic jewel kit this is a weapon and this is another like non uh hitting weapon but after a friendly minion loses divine shield give minions in your hand plus one plus one lose one durability so if you have natural divine shield and you have lots of minions in hand this card's really good but paladin has no card draw so they have small hands and they have to give their minions divine shield so 
And so it's realistically incredibly hard to pull off. Paladin has to get some insane card draw, which then to make this good um, and lots of divine shield. I just can't see this card working. I think this card's absolute garbage. We'll never see play. Next card we got is Elec Mount. Give a minion plus four, plus seven, and taunt. When it dies, summon an Elec. This is very, uh, which is a four, seven. Uh, this is very uh, taunt. This is very much reminiscent of Spike Red Steed, which was a card for Paladin. And that card was very good. So um, this card I could definitely see playing now in the current archetype of Priest. Um, what's also what's nice about this is this is a beast. So you would re revive it with Nazoth if you weren't running Scorpids. So now Scorpids are insane, but let's say Scorpids get nerfed or something like that. Um, this could be a nice addition to your Nazoth. Do I think Priest will realistically run this card? Probably not. But in the world of Created By, will they often pick it? Absolutely. So this is a card that realistically is not going to be run in decks, in, at least in the current archetypes. Um, maybe someone figures out a different kind of archetype that wants to run this. But I think uh, currently this card will not see play. It's too slow. You need to have a minion on board. But it is quite strong. So I think it's a card you'll discover a lot. So it, do I put this? I'm going to say pretty decent because it's going to be useful to Priest class. But realistically, I don't think many decks will actually run this card. So, um, yeah. Next, we got Dark Bishop Benedictus. Start of the game. If all spells in your deck are shadow, enter shadow form. Now, this card is insane, uh, but the reality is so is cards like Apotheosis so, and Renew. So it's like, and the problem is Priest doesn't have a win condition. So the problem is, oh, well, I have these nice pings, but now I don't have Apotheosis. I don't have Renew. I don't have that, that ability to just keep randomly generating stuff forever. Now, you could still discover that stuff maybe off of Scorpid, but it's just not going to be, some of these cards are not going to be as good. So it's hard. Yeah, but getting the two damage hero power is insane. It's, you know, it's a, it's a odd card. You know, it's like, it's the, um, I can't remember the name, but it's, it's a reminiscent of the old start of the game, odd and even decks. Uh, Gen Graming, and uh, I can't even remember. I blocked it out of my mind. So reality is this card is very strong. So if the so if priest finds a real win condition, a real way to win, not just randomly generating and just surviving forever, this card could be very good. So I think this card is broken, but I could see it not seeing play. But it's not because of this card; it's because of the way priest is designed as a whole. So I'm going to still say broken because with the right synergies, this card could just give you. You're just able to ping things off, easily control the board. And then you get to maybe a late game win condition that now Priest has been given with a new set or maybe a future set. And this could just be absolutely amazing. But right now, Priest doesn't have that. They're, they're, they're playing defense. So I think right now, would this card see play in the current meta with the current things? I don't think so. But this card could be absolutely broken with the right win condition. Um, next, we got Heavy Plate. Uh, this is a tradable gain eight armor. So, but realistically, do I think this is good? Now, it does. It's a gain life card that you can throw away if you don't need it. So that's nice, but it's still not very efficient compared. But maybe uh, I, th I think this is mostly garbage. But there are some things that decks that want to gain armor as warrior. So maybe if warrior has you know good enough card draw, good enough value, a control warrior archetype might use this. But I think it's mostly garbage. Compare this to shield block, which uh, cycle the card where this, uh, you know, I can cycle for one, but the fact is it's still just not that efficient and I lose value. So I think realistically this is garbage. And finally we got ramming mount, giving minion plus two plus two and immune while attacking. When this dies, summon a ram, you get the two, two ram immune while attacking. Uh, this is super efficient. You can use it to take a value trade. So it's kind of reminiscent of the the old two fours that would give him you battle cry, give a minion immune. So you have to have something, but it gets the plus two attack, so you can give it more attack and then value trade. So I think this card. Um, now I don't know if this quite works in face hunter. So will um, hunter have the right archetype that makes this work? Right now, the only decks that are hunter run man cricket as their only three mana uh, with no three mana spells. So the Barak always draws that. That being said, this card's really cool. 
Um, and I think in the right deck, it'd be very strong. Um, being able to buff, rush, and get a death rattle is very, very good. So I, I almost want to say broken, but I could see it just not working in the current archetypes. But I think the card's too strong. Like, the card's really, really strong. So I'm just going to say pretty decent because I don't see it working in current hunter archetypes. Which maybe I should give it a broken. Uh, I, maybe I'll, I'm just going to give it a broken. I think it's really good, but realistically, I need, it need the deck needs to find its home. So hopefully it finds its home, but just the efficiency of this card, getting the immune, like, is really, really strong. Imagine you put this on just a 1-1 rush you get from the 2-3, rush it in, get, get the trade, and then when it dies, it gets to the death route. Like, that's so freaking efficient. So very, very good because uh, what you get for the mana, very, I think a very, very good card. So anyways... That, those are the cards. I think the tradable, really cool. The new quest, really cool. I'm really excited for this expansion. I'm hoping it's the next Skullamance Academy. I was a big fan of Skullamance Academy. It was super fun. So maybe we'll have one of the most fun expansions of the year. I, I, I'm hoping so. I, I'm feeling optimistic. I really love what I'm seeing. So anyways, I'll be doing more updates. Hope you guys like this. Uh, but yeah, go check out the United... Uh, the United... Dude, I can't even say the name right. The United in Stormwind. <laughs> I was going to say United in the Barrens. You know, the United in Stormwind. Uh, oh, it's really right there. I don't know why I'm saying Go check out the United in Stormwind. It's going to be fantastic. Uh, I'm really excited. I hope you guys like these cards and enjoy. Enjoy.